Today's project is to make a dorm shirt, the kind of thing you lounge around the house in. Since I don't have a dorm shirt pattern, I'm going to make one from a regular t-shirt pattern. The difference between a regular tee and a dorm shirt is that a dorm shirt is more relaxed, it's longer, it's intended to cover the back side, so it's all you really need to wear. The armholes are a little bit deeper, and the shoulders a little bit wider. Tees that aren't designed to cover the hip may not have enough hip room, and because this length is extended, we'll need to make sure there's enough room for the hips. The pattern I have decided to start with is a t-shirt from the Do-It-Yourself Better Club. It's the ABB shirt, but this is the one designed for men because we want a dorm shirt not to be fitted the way that you might want your day t-shirts to be. In addition, this is going to come down way past the hip on the lady who wears it, and she needed an extra bit of hip room, which you might find is typical of women. So I've added an inch, and this is the front. The back will get the same treatment, so it flares over the behind. In addition, she wants a shirt tail hem. So I've taped on some extra fabric. I guess you know from my slip up what I do with my time. I taped on extra paper though. And I'm going to use this to help me draw an even curve. There it is drawn. It could be anything, but this curve looks good to us. Could be like that as well. And I'll trim it out with scissors. This is the back piece. And it got the same treatment of extending the width of the hip a little and then adding a shirt tail hem. The nice thing about drawing your own shirt tail hems is they don't have to be identical. This one, we've made the back a little bit longer than the front to make certain that the shirt actually gives good coverage in the back where it's less likely to hang long enough. And they don't have to be the same to look nice. It's actually pretty stylish. Now, you may have noticed I'm recycling bits of paper. And just to make sure that doesn't confuse me later, I'm scribbling that out so I know it's not germane to this pattern. You probably noticed that I'm using the largest size of this pattern, which is for a finished 48. Um, the girl that's going to wear it is not all that large. The reasoning is this. She wants it somewhat oversized because it's a lounging item. And the design of this pattern, you have to measure every one, it's not all that wide at the shoulder. It will only finish to about 17 inches across, which is oversized but not extraordinarily large, so this will be fine. Here's the sleeve. We'll use the cutting line for the short sleeved version. And because we haven't changed anything about the upper areas of the main pattern, we need change nothing about the sleeve either. What we will need to keep in mind as we sew as you may see, this says one inch single fold hem. We cannot do that and create this curve simultaneously. So that necessitates a change of hem style. What I'll do is serge around the edge and then do a narrow rolled hem, stitching just a quarter inch of fabric under. One great reason to use this pattern is that it's really very nicely drafted. The front and the back of the sleeve are not identical. The same is true of the armhole they fit into. And of course, the same is true of us. But with many men's tees, the front and back really are identical, which is okay. Your body will certainly fit into that if you buy it large enough. But it's not a very refined fit. And that's why this particular t-shirt pattern is such a super starting place for a nice dorm shirt. This one is a big success. It could also be used as a bathing suit cover-up or even on some occasions for a really casual dress.